Flando has returned to the KSO show. Yay. I'm back. Yay. What Can't believe do? it. Hey, you're back as a fan of a Super Bowl champion. Hey, I know. Right? Oh, man. It I, still feels surreal. We had talked about, like, last week when we didn't have our show, I jokingly told Logan and Flando, like, I might just let you guys talk about the Chiefs-Niners matchup for 40 <laughs> minutes and walk out the door and let you guys do it. I'll have with it. But um, congratulations to that to you, too, man. You're a Chiefs uh, yeah, guy, I'm right? Sort of, I'm mean, not a big Chiefs fan, but a big but it was fun, Chiefs fan. You know? I, I enjoyed the game. Now you're jumping party. on it, right? Oh, yeah. Well, Come I on. mean, I, I, I go back to – I remember Krishna Nikoye. Yep. Did you, ever, did you ever teams. play, like, Tecmo Super Bowl on the Nintendo or anything? Yes. Remember Krishna Okoye? Yes. You, you could not. It was te- good. It, you, they weren't the Raiders. Nightmare. They weren't right. They were, they were good. So, real fast, we're getting an important K-State stuff, <laughs> Flanders. Krishna Okoye, the Nigerian, ni- yep. Nigerian Nightmare. You know who that 35, is? 35, yep. Okay, great. You know yep. who he is. On Tecmo Super Bowl, if he was at full strength, he had to be healthy, mm-hmm. defenders literally just bounced off him. Yes. Like, no matter how many, they would just run up to him, wow. and then you get this little... It was pfft, awesome. And they'd bounce <laughs> off of him. Now, the difference yeah. with... Not Bo Jackson, though. Who you go on... you could just I go run say, around. Yeah, isn't go, he to like, YouTube, go to YouTube and type in Bo Jackson Tecmo Touchdown, and you can watch a guy that's... He, people can do this. Spend five minutes of a quarter <laughs> running back and forth. They don't score. They'll start at their own end zone, run to the one, turn around, go back to their own one, turn around, just dodging yeah. tacklers <laughs> the whole way. And then they'll run five minutes off and then touch down at the end of the quarter. Wow. That's how you run clock. Let's talk K-State sports. That's, right. That's what we're here Time to do. Time of possession. Correct. Time of possession. Oh, Bill Snyder, Chris Kleiman both would have loved that strategy. No doubt Tecmo. about it. We are at Tallgrass Tap House. Tecmo. We have it on the emulator. We'll play it sometime. We, we have to do that. Um, we, I still don't think I've ever touched that emulator yet. No, it's a really good deal, honestly. But anyway, K-State. Tallgrass Tap House, K-State. <laughs> We are here, the KSO Show, presented by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Flanders. Two great places. I'm going to tell you, there's 10, there's ten, of ten, them? ten branches. There's 17 ATMs. Uh-huh. When we were in Colorado, we drove by a lot of PSB signs How about on the way that, back. that, though, too? Yeah. Hill City yeah. was out there, I think. Uh-huh. I don't want to say any more that are wrong. But <laughs> anywho, talking K-State basketball, we've got Fan on with us. We have Natalie off mic. She probably won't do much. We have Flando on mic. Fan put in a lot of work, Flando. I'm excited about mid-season it. Mid-season Big 12 uh, stats extravaganza. We can look at it from K State perspective. We can look at it from the Big Twelve perspective. We'll do both. I think we'll trade back and forth, asking yep. questions, and then we'll come back at the end and maybe as a group say, "Hey, if we think K State's playing good basketball, like they played the last six games or so, what can they do?" So the the first thing I want to know, and maybe this is skipping to like more of the meat and potatoes, and it's actually not K State. Who would be your All Big Twelve team, and why at this point of the season? That's a good question. I, I know. I know. I put you on the spot right off the top. I just. I think it's fascinating like to me because you've talked forever, and you're right. To be good, you need to have a couple All-Big 12 guys. Yeah. Who do you got so far? Well, I, I put together a team based on the stats that I create that are based on possession-based for individuals. Um, and I've got points and rebounds and assists, and then I've got some offensive efficiency stats that I use. And there's debate here. I went back through and looked at a bunch of different numbers as I went through this and even second Flander guess and myself. We'll debate you with no background in this but too. <laughs> <laughs> my initial one that I would probably change now, my initial one, my first team was Dotson from KU. Oh, come on. <laughs> Teague, what are you? Teague and Butler from Ken Palm underscore fan here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. No. Jess Palm. Jess, Jess Palm, Palm is the rating that's you're looking great. at. Yeah. I love it. So Teague and Butler from Baylor. Manic from OU, which was probably the one that got debated the most on Twitter. Yeah. But he's got, like, ridiculous scoring rates. And then, a mustache, too. And then Azabuki from KU. Yeah, that, really was, that was my first team. My second team was Ramsey from Tech, Bain from TCU, Xavier Sneed, mm-hmm. okay. and then Gillespie and Culver. Yeah. Now, as I looked through and had discussion with – I mean, I had people from Baylor and Tech and all over chiming in on yeah. this. So it was kind of cool conversation on Twitter when I put this out today. But I could see putting Gillespie over Manic, just because Manic's kind of a system guy. I mean, I think is it from a K State perspective, he's everything we wanted Sean Rhodes to be. Right. Oh, that's a great reference. I, I mean, that. If Sean I mean, Rhodes had hit that shot against KU with like a that, ninety-six. That was a big one. Yes. They probably never become the beast they because, are today. <laughs> I mean, my my thing with him was he, he was like top two or three in efficiency, points per one hundred, um, and his usage was up there as well. So yeah. that's why I rated him higher. But then people came back and said, you know, his rebounding numbers aren't great. He's kind of in the middle of the league. Per 100 rebounds, and then his defense really is not yeah. that great at all. And OU's not a great team, so I can listen to Gillespie. I also, when I looked at it, I put Butler on there just because I think 
Baylor's guards are so yeah. good. He had a great Gosh. night the other night, for he's, sure. And he's, so he was sad. really good against us. His, his offensive rating, though, is under one point per possession, which is yeah. a little low for me. So I could see the case for moving Ramsey up there or Bain up there. Um, even looking at a guy like Miles McBride from West Virginia. Yep. In Huggins' system, he plays like 22 minutes a game. So yeah. if he was playing 30, 35 minutes like some of these other guards, he'd probably have – not quite the efficiency, but better numbers on par mm-hmm. with those. So the weird thing about when I look at my sheet, I really don't even look at points per game. Yeah. I look at my stats. And so I those probably stats look really should be. I dead, probably look at it. I, I mean, probably look at it a little differently game, yeah. than most people. But uh, that's what I came up with. But the Shuby from West Virginia is, is really good. Sims from Texas. Samuel from TCU. Uh, oh, Halliburton. Like, but, Halliburton from Iowa State should probably yeah, uh, be a second teamer. So there's some good players but in this league. The reason I like it in Flanders, you got you can ask about it too if you want, but like you're and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. You're not trying to tell us who the best five players in the Big Twelve are. You're telling us by the numbers, these are the five that have been probably the most productive yes. in the Big Twelve mine so far is, this year. Mine is I mean, I get a little biased. And I mean I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll be honest, I probably gave Sneed a nod because I'm a case sure, leader. Sure. But for the most part, I'm looking at just what these numbers say compared to each other, because to me, that's the thing that I look at with these is p- per game can be skewed by pace, by how many minutes you play, mm-hmm. by what your usage is. Right. And here I can look at all those things and really tell and you also, how good a guy is. And you understand, too, with those numbers, how a team values guys. So yes. Brady Manick, for example, I mean, yes, system somewhat, but if Oklahoma doesn't have him, how bad's Oklahoma? Oh, well, they would be I awful mean, I mean, so he's incredibly yes. valuable for them. Yeah. And then if you're arguing Brady Manick versus, you know, Versus Ferguson, or, you know, Fer- Ferguson, right? Why am I forgetting his name at Baylor? No, the big guy, Gillespie. 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 Oh, transfer. Yeah. Gillespie. Yep. Tristan Clark off their bench. That's just yes. crazy. Uh, yeah. That's all changed. But, yes. you know, the thing about yes. Gillespie, yeah, maybe maybe he's a better player. And maybe if you're building a team, like, you know, with toughness rebounding, maybe you pick him or whatever. But I think from the numbers, I just wish Flanders more people did. We have this yeah. all the time off the air. Rankings, yes. picking playoff teams, whatever, not based off of who they think is better, mm-hmm. but what – what they believe the facts are, tell them that's better. Now, so, so, so you're saying Jesse now Newell is say, right? Now I, was say, <laughs> I would say if Jesse Newell, if, I would, I, I do, I, to an extent, I do respect him the way he does it. I think the way he does it is lazy, though. Uh-huh. If I'm being honest. When you look through it, and it's just Ken Palm with three or four teams changed, and Kentucky thrown at 25 to confuse you. Well, well, you to know? be fair to Jesse, I do yeah. think he takes like Ken Palm, yeah. ESPN's BPI. And I think he probably averages them to, together. And sure. then I think he uses that more. It's not just Ken Palm. I mean, I, I've made fun of him for it I as well. I just want him to have some. But I agree with you. I want him to have that, something of his own. You know what I mean? That I, I agree with you. It's like, tough yeah. when you're borrowing from other people. Right. But I, I like, also agree with the point that I like the he says, I can't it. watch every game. There's no way. Right. And I follow KU for a living. So. That's gonna. I respect that's gonna, all of that. Yeah, I, I mean, literally, I seriously, I can do. see both sides. But I would say is if you, if you aren't gonna put a different topic now, <laughs> any human thought into your poll, yes. I would give up my vote. I mean, if, no, I, I if I'm not you. gonna put yep. any, and, and again, yep. a lot of people who are very smart say the votes are stupid, and maybe they are. You know, what I mean, like yep. that's a whole other point. But I, I like the idea of having a system and putting who you think, whether it's rankings, whatever. I just think it should be your own. Like, yeah. it is. And I agree with you. you. I, give me Jimmy's every time. Give me Jimmy oh, over, Jimmy's over You're everyone. biased. You're biased, too. I'm biased already. Give me your five. Selton the uh, Gale. No, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, not even in uniform Nigel yet. Mack, Nigel yep. Shad. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nigel <laughs> Shad. James Love. Yeah, yeah correct. <laughs> correct. Um, so, I will, I, I'll ask you this. And then, Flanders, I'll pass it off to you. You've got your midseason, like, generic Big 12 questions for him. Do you Baylor has been, in my opinion, the best team in the league so far. Do your numbers tell you that? And do you think Baylor, just from what you've seen, I'm not asking you to, you know, to yeah. sign a prediction with blood or anything. Do you think Baylor should win this league outright by itself? I, I think they should, simply because they won at KU right. already. So they've got kind of the leg up in the race, in my opinion. To me, the most reliable single stat you can look at is efficiency differential. Mm-hmm. And right now, Baylor is slightly ahead of KU. Both are about 0.16 points per possession yeah. offense over their defense, mm-hmm. which is, to me, the best. West Virginia is not far behind at 0.14. So all three of those are clearly, to me, the top of the league. And then big gap until Tech. And I then would, yeah. Tech is a little bit behind at point zero nine, and then next is OU at zero, like even. So there's a huge drop. So there's like a and small then, tier and then between three and four. And then actually the sixth team in that is K State really? at point minus point zero eight. 
That so, Kim Palm Luck thing is correct, apparently. That? Well, you know, I mean, the the thing about I think we with Kim Palm Luck, it's basically how many standard deviations you are from where you should be right. based on your numbers. Yeah. Right. And K State is like 345 out yeah. of basically 353 te- teams. Yeah. And so he's saying, we well, we talked we talked earlier about about we're nine and thirteen. Right. You call it, you could make the argument that K State sh- could be thirteen to nine. Right. Mm-hmm. If you flip a coin in a couple games, basically. K State's record is really bad, yep. and if you want to say some people when they we talked about this before, some people say K State sucks. K State doesn't suck. Their record's pretty darn bad, and it kind of sucks. If yep. you're going to be honest yeah. about it, and, and sometimes but, the basketball is ugly to watch. Correct. correct. But that's college basketball in general. This correct. Year too. But K State, you know. Uh, you know, your record is what it is, you know. But mm-hmm. fan just told me they're the sixth best team in the league, and he guaranteed it. <laughs> I mean, so there so that's you go. All I care about. Um, do you see a team in there out of those? You know, so the top five, I guess. Yes. You referenced Oklahoma's kind of. Uh, is anybody you think just not what their numbers say? I know that flies in the face of what I've told you that I believe you believe in these yeah. numbers. But there's somebody you go through to say, boy, I don't think Tech's that good, or Oklahoma's that good, or there's somebody that let, you think the numbers are lying to you when you look I, at it. I think. I think we're at the halfway point, so I think these numbers are a pretty good measure of where these teams are at. Yeah. I would say Baylor, KU, West Virginia are at the top of the league. Tech is kind of a notch below them. Yeah. And then Oklahoma. And then I think you really can throw the rest in a hat. Maybe OSU at the bottom, even though they got a win last night. I mean, I don't right. think they're very good. But K-State, Texas, TCU, Iowa State – you pretty much can toss them in the hat. And we've already seen that K-State was basically better than Oklahoma for mm-hmm. 75 of they, 80 they minutes. They let them for, I think it was more than that even. I think and, it was like 78 of 80 know, minutes they let Oklahoma yeah. this and year. And so you could make the case that even even though I don't believe in it, the eye test and the numbers say K-State's probably even better than Oklahoma. If K-State but. plays Oklahoma, just heads up 10 times, yes. I'm prob- <laughs> which isn't how you play college basketball. Win six or seven. But I think K-State probably beats them six. Yep. Yep. Unfortunately, that's not what they're going to use to determine yep. you know, who had the better season between K-State and Oklahoma. Yep. So we've seen we've seen in the past few uh-huh. years Big 12 able to get six, seven teams into the tournament. I mean, what does it look like this year at this point in the season? Well, I, I think what do you predict? I would say we're sure for sure at four. Yeah. And I think Oklahoma, I think a fifth team will get it just because, number one, the Big 12 is still the second-ranked right, conference two, yeah. in, like, every measure. I mean, the the Big 10 is crazy because they yeah. probably have 12 NCAA tournament teams right now. They won't get 12. But then every other league is like the Big 12 or worse. Like, yeah. the Big East is very similar to the Big 12 where there's a couple of good teams, a team or two in the middle. And then a bunch of teams that are probably NIT or worse yep. teams. But one of, there's going to be some of those teams slide into the tournament this year. I would be curious as we move to K-State more a little bit. So you said they're sixth best when you're comparing, you know, just efficiency difference. Yes. If you're going to pick out a metric that K-State most needs to improve, that you also believe will probably get better, you know, just whether over the course of the season just by being <clears throat> Do's the wrong word, but yeah. average is coming to where they should be. What's a stat that you think needs to get better and you hope will get better? The, the number one would be turnover rate, especially on offense. I mean, we still have the second best turnover, third best turnover defense. rate on defense, yeah. but our offensive turn rate is nine or ten in the league. Mm-hmm. And so, even Bruce said it today in his press yep. conference: if you turn people over, but then you turn it over back yourself, you don't get any benefit yeah. out of it. And so. If they can get that turnover rate under 20%, last year they led the league in turnover rate differential. I think the year before they, that, they were first or second. This year right now we're trending at fourth. But if they get up to second or third in the league in turnover rate differential, which is where they should be mm-hmm. based on how often we turn people over, then you're talking about maybe winning five games, six games in the second half of the Big 12. Cardi. Speaking of turnovers, uh, oh, come on, boo. I mean, I, yeah. I just I want to ask: Has he has he made this team worse by being the player he's been this year, or what? What is your take on that? Well, my my deal on Cardi is I don't I don't think he's made us worse. We I don't think we beat West Virginia without the game he right. had against them for sure. Um, the Oklahoma game he wasn't as good, but. I mean, that was kind of Mike McGurl's game. But to me, the thing is, I mean, when you are 
Right now, here's the deal with Cardi. He's got the second highest usage rate in the league. Yeah. And usage rate basically takes your minutes, how much you play, and then it takes every offensive stat you can have that you can end a possession with, and it tells you how what your usage is. And Cardi's, Cardi's usage is like 30%, almost 30%. Yes. For comparison's sake, Trey Young was like 40%. Yep. So that's the extreme. Yeah. Okay. The but Cardi's is higher than any K State player under Bruce. Like way higher than Barry Brown. Even Barry Brown, you know, yeah. even Marcus Foster, uh, yeah, Rodney high, Bruder, all those. So guys. he's yeah. he's higher, but his efficiency rate is right now it is is under point one point zero. Right now it's at point nine in the Big Twelve. Mm-hmm. It's at um, let's see here as I look it up point nine three overall. So. Any anytime you're, I'm good. Anytime yeah, you're, you. anytime your efficiency is that far under one. I mean, usually for a point guard, you're not going to be like one point one eight like Dean yeah. was, but you should be one point oh five like yeah. Barry was. Yeah, and he's almost you know a, 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 a ways behind that. And so when you use that much and your efficiency is that low, it it kind of has a ripple effect on your team. And so I, I wouldn't blame him because X is. X's isn't much better. Yeah, his is still over one right now, but it's not a whole lot better. And really, the thing is, both of those guys are about where they've been for their career, maybe a little bit lower. Yeah. But we needed those guys to jump, yep. and they didn't jump, and that's why we're where we're at. I, I think, and I just kind of want to answer the question too because it's yeah. a great question. I think listening to all that really helped me understand. I think the best way, from my opinion, on Cardi right now is nothing it's not it's certainly not his fault that would be an incredibly yes. wrong and lazy thing to do because uh, a lot of mac has struggled for a lot of times x has really struggled to score yep. but i think that what fan just explained what i heard is he's not he's not a bad player no but he's being asked you know i mean the way he's the way he's either by his choice or whatever it is he's handling the ball and being used like a first team all american yep. When he's playing like a sixth man quality mm-hmm. player on a big no, basketball that, that is team. a great way to say it. Yeah. And so he's not a bad player. He's not doing a bad job. Mm-hmm. But what he is producing in the – how heavily it's weighted because yeah. how much he's being used, it makes it appear that it's yeah. quote-unquote his fault. He, or, he, he's or also second in the year, second in the league in the percentage of shots – he takes for our team when he's on the floor. Yep. Yeah. Only Jared Butler from Baylor is right. higher than him in both those categories. So Cardi is so he's, he's the usage rate. He's the number one for usage rate. Number two. Number two Jared Butler's number Jared one. Jared Butler's number one. Yeah. In okay. both number usage one, and shots. State, all and Cardi is twice. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's it's wild. his second. Yeah. Uh, Mac is something I want to ask about. Then I'm going to trans- transfer into you know K State's rest of their season. I'm a big Mac guy for some reason. He's kind of become my cam this year because he's really struggled so much. <laughs> yep. I think he's been pretty decent the last three or four games. I think you've done a great job. And I don't. I never like to joke about about players, but you showed on the board today, and I almost made the comment that he's gone from what 65 on twos to 54 to yes. 45. And I about posted that means if he came back next year, he'd be at like 32. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yes. I mean, that's not. The point is, I do think he's played better the last few games. Do you see signs? You know, can Mac get back to being the player? Is he getting close to back to the player that he was the last couple of years? I think he's playing better because he's playing with a little more confidence, a little mm-hmm. more energy. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing about Mac. This season, he's got the 13th best rebounding rate in the last 20 years, basically. Yeah. At K State, so he's not bad. Yeah. Right. He's got a block rate that's in the top 15 as well. So and he's a key part of a defense. That's, he's like he's you a said, key number, yeah. key defender, but the the key is is that two point percentage dropping off the map this year, and 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 that's going to happen if you really can't adjust your game to being the number three guy on the on yeah. the scouting report instead of the number five guy, and I think that's really what's happened to him. And we talked before. Sorry to cut you off, yeah, Landers. Yeah. You were ready there. I was going to say something about Mac. I don't know if you're are you going to stay well, on him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we could say the same. Yeah, it's about Mac. Yeah. It's about Mac. Okay, it's good. Actually, so, gonna... actually the sixth best block rate wow. so, in the last 20 years. So wow. we talked before we went on K-State's that's... two two and six in close games. And you try to think about why and how yeah. does how does that happen? How does that happen? A lot of these are, you know, one or two point, three point yes. losses. And even you know, if they're four point losses, they're games that if you score another hoop to go up four late, uh-huh. you win it. So it's not always just as simple as losing by four. And if Mac it makes one or two of those shots, you know, in three or four of those games. Mm-hmm. Maybe K State instead of being nine and three, maybe they're not thirteen and nine, right? Yep. Maybe they're eleven and eleven. Well, yeah, maybe I mean, they're twelve and ten. Can, I mean, so that's how simple it is. And if that's where shoots, you can look at right. 
any of our top three. If X makes or, a th- uh, right. if X makes a big three, if Cardi doesn't have a turnover, yep. and if Mac makes a layup, I mean, you're talking about being thirteen and nine or fourteen and eight instead of nine and thirteen. I mean, it, it really is that simple. The record is what it is, and it's disappointing, and it's not good enough. We're not trying to say the opposite, but in, in, in football. You know, there's you. I think when you look at wins and losses, sure there's lucky wins and losses. Sure there's plays that impact it, but the better team often yeah. wins. And in basketball, they they do too. But it seems the line is so thin between and lo- uh-huh. winning and losing. Um, Flanders, should we kind of do our like half-hearted predictions for the rest of the year? Let's get. Why don't yeah. you pull? Can yeah. you? Oh, is it going to mess up your recording if you pull it up? See. We can well, don't it don't do it if it's going to mess it up. Ask it me is. to do it. Um, I was going to see if you could pull the schedule up. Just yes, read it off to us game by game. This is not our predictions. We're going into this with the mindset of if K-State plays what we consider realistically well. They're not beating everybody. They're not going to win every game against you know average teams. But if they play realistically well, best case scenario, what could this team finish at? So right now, you said they're 9-13, and 13, right? 2-7 and seven in the Big 12, is correct. that right? That is correct. So we'll just kind of add to that record as we go through. I know they start. Iowa State on Saturday. We'll be there, you and me. Yeah, gonna we go. will. Well, I would say if, if, if things are if they're going to turn it around, they would win this game at Iowa State. Again, I'm not going to give them every Iowa win State. against teams like this, but I would say win. You know, yep. if they're turning it around, so three and seven now in the three Big Twelve. And, three and seven Big Twelve, ten and thirteen overall. Then it, Tuesday they go back home and play Oklahoma State. I mean, again, we, yeah. if you don't win that one, you're in trouble. So yes. if they do, you're now eleven and thirteen yep. and four and seven in the Big Twelve. Yep. Okay, keep us going. Then we got Saturday. They got they go to TCU. That's that. That Valentine's Day. Yep. I know. Day. I'm going to be down there. Yep. Taking, I mean, you and Nazis. I want to hear what you guys say because, again, like, yes, you lost to TCU in the last seconds at home. It's a game you could win. But now I'm getting to the point where, like, if I'm talking realistically, I don't know if I can pick them to win at yeah. Iowa State and at TCU. No. You know what I mean? Like, they I could probably, win them both. What do you think, fan? I mean, TCU will be just because it's on the road and this – I mean, you got Iowa State on the road, TCU on the road, you got Oklahoma State on the road later. Right. But – the, the thing that this team is kind of at the point is, uh, for me, is prove it. Right, I agree. We haven't run a, won a road game yet. Yep. Well, we, we UNLV, won at UNLV. Yeah, but not, yeah. yeah. But one road game, and not other than that, year. we've lost every road game. Every neutral site game has been a loss. So, prove it. I agree. This team could. It could. Because they've been close in several of those games. But um, I think they're going to win a road game or two right. still this season. It's just a matter of which ones it's going to be. Yep. So just to make it easy, let's give this one plus, the L. Plus, yeah. Plus, TCU is kind of reeling. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing to look at. What is the state of that team? The other thing too. I mean, they just lost Oklahoma State. Uh huh. They've gone from I think they started like four and two in the league. You talk about a not and now they're four and five. Oh my god. And there will not be people there. No way. E- you know, even though I'm <laughs> even though I'm going ahead, I'm, I'm in this scenario. I'm picking the Iowa State win and the TCU loss. It might actually be more likely the other way around because Iowa State. Will be a much tougher environment. That's and true. Yeah, I mean, yeah. either way, we'll say a win and a loss. That's so that ha- we were eleven and thirteen and four and seven. So that has us now. <coughs> when I say us, I don't mean K State. I mean our our tracking yep. Yep. Yeah. at eleven and fourteen, mm-hmm. four and eight in the Big Twelve. Yeah, correct. after the game at TCU. Yep. All right, yeah. and they head to Texas Tech after that on Wednesday. Go loss. Yeah. Yep. Uh, loss there. So four and nine in the Big Twelve, eleven and fifteen overall. Yes. Okay. And then here maybe a win Texas at home. In this scenario, I'm saying yeah. I think yeah. we're going to win that one, yeah. So five. We're in Lavender that game. It says it on this five and <laughs> Five and nine Big 12. I've lost five and already. Nine. Yes. Five and nine Big 12 and 12 and 15 overall? Yep. Okay. Yes. Here's a loss at Baylor that next yep. Tuesday. Five and 10, 12 and 16. And then they go, and then they go back home to play Kansas at home. Probably lose that one. I mean, it, it uh, could be yeah, a situation. I mean, yeah, you yeah. never know. You never yeah. know. Yeah, you never know. We're gonna call it a loss. Yeah. Uh, where are we at now? And then I yeah, need a record. Um, uh, so we were at five and. Well, we should be tracking this. We should be tracking this. So we were. Let's, they've they've let's lost. Go we got Iowa State win that we went from. I'm gonna count. Okay, go back to Iowa State. I'm gonna count the Big Twelve. You're gonna count the overall. Okay. Okay. So Iowa State win, and that and that makes overall. 10 and 13. 10 and 13. And so Big 12 and would 13. be 3 and 7. Yeah. 10 and 13. Oklahoma State win. That's 11 and 13. 4 and 7 in the Big 12. TCU loss. 11 and 14. 11 and 15. 14. 14. 11 and 14. Mm-hmm. Texas 4 Tech and 8 in the Big 12. 11 and 15. 
Texas win. Wait, so 12, four nine of the Big Twelve. Twelve and fifteen. Twelve and fifteen at Baylor. Five 12 and nine. And Sixteen. Yes. Five and ten. Kansas. Twelve and seventeen. Five and eleven. Oklahoma State. Uh, there. Thirteen. We'll call it a win. We'll call it a win. Thirteen and seventeen. Six and eleven. And then Iowa State at home. Call it a win. It off. Fourteen and seventeen. Or yeah, fourteen and seventeen. Did they only play thirty games though? Either way, so w- thirty-one. Yeah, so four. So we have fourteen and seventeen overall. Yeah. Seven and eleven in the Big Twelve. Yep. If and, you know, and, yeah. And here's here's the way I I looked at it when I broke it down. Mm-hmm. You've got Iowa State twice, Oklahoma State twice, and you TCU go, and Texas. So you have those six games. God, I'm th- I'm thinking we win at least four of those. Yeah, yep. maybe five. Then you got KU, Baylor, and Tech. Probably zero, but maybe, maybe one. one. You maybe you steal one. So. I'm looking at my minimum, I think, would be four wins, yeah. and I think five is a real possibility, and I think six is it not unbelievable. I mean six more wins. Six more Right, wins. so that added to what's ex- in existence. You're saying six to eight Big 12 wins. Yes. And I said seven, yes. I mean, in that little thing yeah. there. Yeah. So we're around I think around seven and 11 is the most likely for now, me. Now, we talk about, and obviously talk about NIT, None of that, that scenario doesn't get no. you. Doesn't yeah, get you. You got to go. You gotta, 11, yeah, you got to go yeah. 500. I mean, I think to get yes, to the NIT. You yeah. So you're not even really close. Yeah. I mean, obviously you'd have to find. Yeah. So when we had the overall record again, 14 and 14 17. And 17. You have to find yeah. two more wins to get to 16 and 15. So you'd have to do what we said, but also win either win all the road games. You know, win at Iowa State and then beat KU at home, mm-hmm. yeah. or win I at mean, Tech or something like that. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's probably more likely they fall a couple losses short yeah. of that. Then you know, I mean, even worse than we projected. Yep. Than going two into yes. bubble. Seven projected. and two would probably be win all those games against teams that are near us, and then win one of those three against the good teams left. Right. Yeah. Maybe you lose. Maybe in theory you lose at Baylor and yeah. at Tech, yes. and win everything else, which would be a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. A question that we had on the board the other day that I really liked the thread was your guys' opinion. So let's say that happens. Let's say K State finishes 14 17, yep. 7 11 in the Big 12. Mm-hmm. That means if you finish 7 and 11 in the Big 12 and starting 2 and 7, you win. And then what? maybe 1 and 1 again in the right. Big 12 tournament. Good. So yeah, 15 and 18. Yeah. CBI is going to, you would have that opportunity. Yes. Just your opinion. Do you take that opportunity? I'll start with Fan. I would take it because of the extra week or two of practice you're going to yeah. get with the freshman, with David Sloan, mm-hmm. with Mike McGurl, right. with Levi Stockard. Uh, sounds like Nigel Shad might be back next I think year. He's a piece. Of, I mean, it, yeah, so at least I mean, they're... you have a a good number of players that are going to be back that yep. you can practice with. I mean, I you could leave it up for debate. Like, sure, you guys that are, I think most of those guys would probably stay and want to play. Right. But you could say, hey, if you don't want to play in whatever tournament, yeah. don't. But we're going to do this for our program. I think all those guys probably would. Now. It's tough how much motivation it was, would be. I mean, of course, the example you're going to use is West Virginia. They had a very similar season to what we're having this year. Yep. Except that team imploded. Correct. Before, they were supposed to be good. Before Huggins they, kicked I mean, them all off the team. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And then they went one and one in the CBI. Yep. And look at this year. They're one of the top 20 teams in the country and right. top three in the league. Mm-hmm. So. I can't opinion. argue against him on that, but also, which was the CBI? Where's College that basketball invitation? Is that, is that, what is that in or? Vegas or something? Is that, I think the final is. I think, no, okay. no, no are, that's the one where you play. The, the final is the best. They're all home court games. Okay. Best the, final the final is best of three. Okay. They need some other, you play, some other experimental rules, I You think, do too. have to pay fifty grand per home game. Yeah. Which I would assume K-State would make you up that make money. That back. I yeah. mean, even if you get five grand at a game, I think K-State's making fifty grand profit. Yeah. So I, th- I mean, I don't think you're losing money yeah. at all. I'm for it too. I mean, again, it's, it's. I know some fans will go to saying it's you know, embarrassing to play in that game. We can't do that. That kind of stuff. Uh, it's not embarrassing. Uh, I mean, the, I, I don't think any sports <laughs> result should be embarrassing. Personally, no, I guess. No, but but no. I mean, it doesn't have it to be a bad be. thing no. for your program either. Like, and again, no. just because West Virginia was good doesn't mean doesn't mean it's a good thing. But a lot of people, you know probably respect Bob Huggins, West Virginia, and they did it. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. So I think if it's okay for them, if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. I, mean, I, I, mean, I think if, <laughs> yeah. you, if you had a senior-led team like right. – I've never had, heard that one. Right. Never heard that. Yeah. Wow. If you had last year's team and you were <laughs> – Correct. No, you not would not do it. it. Not worth but it. If you, if you only have three guys for sure you're losing, maybe – I mean, four with love probably. But 
Have if you're you only losing a certain number of seniors, then keep playing. What's another old guy saying? Like a what's a, a bird in the bird in the hand is like two in the bush or yes, something like yes. that. I've heard that you one. Heard that? I know one of my dad used to horse, say. A horse to water. Uh, I've heard that one. My dad used to say, um, "Is a uh, is a short for." Is a short forty pound rabbit fat? Like to you know <laughs> I've never heard that. <laughs> I've never heard that. So like if you show so you have an Elmer Fudd hat on right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome, this is an awesome hat, by the way. <laughs> uh, uh, this has probably gone off the rails. <laughs> I think we're gonna wrap it up. I really appreciate Jimmy or Jimmy. at KSU underscore fan. If you don't follow him on Twitter, he doesn't do this for the follows, but I'd like you to follow him because he says fascinating stuff and it's getting to the point, like you said, you can get some fun interactions on, on Twitter on there. Uh, with other fans because they paid yeah, huh? his stuff now too and that's really cool and of course the board's what matters more and he posts on the board all the time but they say if you don't follow him don't follow him because uh, it's cool to see interactions with other fan bases and that kind it of is, stuff it is don't follow Flanders no there's no benefit don't. unfollow to me if you're following uh, me now, already if you want to follow <laughs> Selton Miguel stuff because that. Selton Miguel can't, there you go. can't do anything without tagging Grant <laughs> this is true I've noticed it. Yeah, I love I mean, it and that's fantastic talk about a guy I saw somebody a different outlet moved him up uh, into their top 100 real recently I actually want to write a story about um, that rivals about has him top yeah, 100 of the season he's having i think bruce weber you know bruce talk about a bruce doesn't always if you take his words super literally they don't come yeah. off great but he said <laughs> he more or less said i never thought something would ever even be this good you know i mean but it's just honest like but nobody did that's why he yeah. didn't have any offers outside of this yes. i mean exactly that, you know that's i thought why we were gonna red shirt murphy right exactly he's just honest but something this whole time really, bossy and Right. Bossy's been doing it the Bossy, right way. Bossy knew. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was yeah. all over. He believed it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, exactly. I want, I want to say this too. To everyone, every K-State fan who believes Rivals is against you, like every fan base yeah. does, yes. just go start looking up the history of recruiting rankings for K-State basketball recruits because they go up about 85% yeah. of the time. Yep. After the K-State. Yeah, went up. Uh, the K-State boost on hoops is what uh-huh. it is. But anyway, I really appreciate him. Flanders, appreciate you, man, so much. Flando and I will be headed to Ames, Iowa this weekend to go to Hilton Coliseum again. No, Wiggington. Last time. time. I'm actually kind of sad. I know, you're right. I love watching them <laughs> shoot jumpers and elevate nine feet in the air on every one of them. I know. Last time we were there, we watched K-State just randomly, what it felt like, win that game in the yeah. last, like, three minutes when they were down yes. five. And, uh-huh. and everything that had to happen happened that is one. Uh-huh. We'll see what happens there. We're also either, we don't know if it's Saturday or Sunday yet, we're going to see Jaden Williams <sighs> in West nice. Des Moines, Iowa. It's 41 minutes away. Ooh. So we're going to go see him. We're going to talk to him a little bit. We're going to go to St. Louis pretty soon. Oh, yeah. See Davion uh-huh. Bradford and Luke Kazuki this month. I think that's all i got to tell people about, right? We don't tell them I anything else it. on this show. Yeah, besides tell your gosh darn friends. Tell them. Oh.